Today, it turns out that California's capital is home to the central piece of a major neo Nazi propaganda network. Yeah. And the story is pretty wild. So a group of anti-fascism researchers have revealed that the voice behind Terragram belongs to a Sacramento area woman. And before we get to her, let's talk about what Terragram Collective is. So the Terragram Collective is at the heart of the international neo-Nazi accelerist movement, the most extreme and explicit iteration of white supremacism, which advocates deadly violence and other acts of destruction to hasten the collapse of society so that a whites only world can be built in its place. Now this collective really specializes in producing propaganda that gets pushed out on the web in hopes of inspiring the next white supremacist mass shooter. Like the man who killed 10 black shoppers up in Buffalo last year or the shooter in Pittsburgh who killed 11 Jews at a synagogue in 2018. That's what the Terragram Collective is cultivating. And the Terragram Collective maintains a horrifying hagiology of these shooters calling them saints and sanctifying their likenesses with medieval style church drawings. Last year to the alarm of anti-fascist and counter-terror organizations, the collective produced a 24 minute documentary that glorified the murders committed by 105 saints over the last 50 years. So up until now, the identities of those extremists behind the propaganda network have been unknown. And that is until it was just revealed. 33 year old Dallas Aaron Huber of Sacramento, Humber, excuse me, was unmasked as the voice behind the documentaries and audiobooks narrating Terragram's mass shooter manifestos. That was Huber's photo taken from a Facebook page that now seemed to have disappeared. Now, how was she tracked down? Well, um, essentially she was online exchanging messages with a founder of a neo-Nazi group. And that individual was recently arrested and charged in a plot to destroy Baltimore's power stations. And so while little is known about Humber, this story does get weirder. There's evidence she has at times made money selling art and that she has worked as an academic tutor. She also was a dildo saleswoman posting videos in which she reviewed different sex toys. Yeah, that's pretty special. But what's definitely known uh, is that a 19 year old who recently opened fired on a popular Slovakian gay bar in October of 2022 publicly gave special thanks to Terragram Collective in the aftermath of its attack that killed two and wounded one. Jenk? Yeah, so there's a couple of things here. First, the right wing will be horrified by this. You're outing them. Boy, this is cancel culture. Let her sell dildos in peace. She's just a poor Nazi woman, you know, uh, celebrating the deaths of Jews and black people and Latinos and stuff. What are you guys outing her for? That doesn't seem uh, very nice of you. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Have we hurt your feelings as you were trying to murder us? Okay. Uh, by the way, this Terragram folks, they call themselves the Terror Bros. Now, let's look at the um, two different ways that America treats the right wing and the left wing. Or, or uh, different races and different groups, right? So in this case, imagine if there was a group uh, that were just black folks and they called themselves the terror bros and they talked about killing white people. And any time that a, there was a, a massacre of white people by a black guy, they celebrated and called him a saint and they promoted him and they said, hey, can you do more? And then another one would do it and they call him a saint and then they, they uh, produce a documentary. Now, do you think that the government would be like, oh, whatever, you know, maybe we'll get to it, maybe we won't. I mean, even outing them, poor guys, they're just trying to be dildo salespeople. What's the big deal? Don't, no, 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 it's no big deal. And imagine if it's Muslims and they call themselves terror bros and they uh, brag about how they kill Christians and they make documentaries about it and they go, oh, yeah, that guy went to a church and killed a whole bunch of Christians. Good job, yeah, terror bros. And then the other guy, he murdered a bunch of Christians and they celebrated. What do you think the government would do? The first, there'd be a national uproar. It would be the biggest uproar you've ever seen in your life. Every piece of media would be like, oh my God, who are these monsters? They have to be stopped. And there would be a call to arrest every one of them, putting them in Guantanamo Bay. Nazis do it to Jews, black people, Latinos, etc. They're like, well. Hey, had you heard this story before? Is this a big national uproar? No, in fact, the people say, oh, don't out them. <laughs> What am I going to do with America? Okay, I want America to be better. I think America could be great, right? But this ain't it. Yeah, like fundamentally, look, honestly, a lot of the media is to blame for this. Like, I'm going to be real. A lot of the media is like entirely to blame for this. Now, there's a lot to be said about the police, and I'll get to that later. But like, first and foremost, 
the media's like absolute like pathetic desire to legitimize the Republican Party is exactly why this is happening right now. Because what they don't want to admit is the simple fact that I mean, and it was literally said by like, I think it was Twitter like a few years ago, essentially said, yeah, we can't apply the anti Nazi algorithm that we have in Germany that we're legally required to in the United States because it would block like half of the Republican Party. And like that is fundamentally what the media doesn't want to acknowledge and admit because they want to keep pretending that what's going on in Congress and state houses across the country is this intellectual debate between colleagues about democracy and freedom. When what's actually happening is you have one party that is fully committed to the profits of giant corporations and White supremacy, that is the core of the entire Republican Party and that is how they operate. And within that, within the fringes of their beliefs, it turns out that they stir up so many anti-Semitic conspiracy theories. They stir up all of these like racist conspiracy theories. I mean, you name it, right? And that leads to like these like terrorist attacks. And then you have these like terror cells that form of these white supremacists. I mean, we know that these organizations are all over the country. We know that these groups are all over the country and yet, because a lot of law enforcement share the same ideas and because the media is so hell bent on giving legitimacy to the Republicans that are saying very often the same exact things as these neo Nazis, right? These just don't get covered. And so they'll talk about, oh, well, this city is burned down, my city, Minneapolis. They talk about how it's all, oh, it's so burned down and it's so terrible. Look at all these Black Lives Matter protesters. Oh my goodness gracious, right? But when you have literal white supremacists committing terrorist attacks, it barely even makes the news. I mean, literally, like a trans woman was almost beaten to death like earlier this week in Minneapolis, right? And there, there's been tons and tons of like mass shootings and other things that are inspired by these white supremacists. But we're supposed to just pretend that it's like these one-off things. We're supposed to pretend that they're not saying exactly the same things that like Tucker Carlson is saying every single night. We're supposed to pretend that we should be taking the Republican Party seriously when they talk about freedom or anything like that. And it's just embarrassing. And then when it comes to law enforcement, we need to recognize the fact that fundamentally, most law enforcement in the United States of America share fundamentally the same beliefs, the same core beliefs about the world as these white supremacists who are committing these terrorist attacks. Like fundamentally, there is an ideological link there. And so it's no surprise that when they roll out their tanks, when they roll out their advanced surveillance technology, when they're hacking into people's computers and stuff like that, they're not doing it to these Nazis. They're doing this to people on the left. They're calling SWAT teams on people that have an ACAB bumper sticker, right? They're barely even pushing to the news stories about these white supremacists. Because ultimately, when it comes to reporting on any type of crime, fundamentally, a lot of the local newspapers just depend on police press releases. And so all of this really just ties together. All right, one last quick thing here. Um, so if you say, well, look, guys, is it fair to say Republicans and Nazis in the same sentence? Uh, how do you, first of all, <laughs> I love this joke of how do you know they're Republicans? <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe they're uh, left wingers. No, they're that's against our entire ideology. So, anyways, but the reason why I say actually it is fair. Number one, Donald Trump literally said about Nazis in Charlottesville, there's good people on both sides. Number two, he recently hosted Nick Fuentes and Kanye West who have both said that they really like Adolf Hitler and that he was a cool guy, okay, for dinner. He had that, he had Nazis over for dinner. And but not only that guys, I wrote about this in my book Justice is Coming. Donald Trump could have picked either message and he actually AB tested. He did trial and error with different messages and the more hateful message resonated better with Republican voters every time. He and he chose to go more hateful and more racist and all of those things because he's a con man and that was the better con. That's what appealed to right wing voters more. I wish it wasn't the case. I really and it's not all right wing voters. But unfortunately, it is a very significant percentage. Anyways, in the case of the actual Nazis, for God's sake, yes, look into them and maybe stop them before they kill more people. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.